so happy that you all can join us. Um, our topic is the family altar in times of crisis. So before we get started, I just want to go ahead and pray. So all hearts and minds clear, just join me in this prayer. Father, I thank you for this gathering. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have allowed all of us to come together from near and far to hear what you will have to speak to your people. We just ask that you open our hearts and our minds and our understanding to your word and to and what you have and the Holy Spirit has to speak to us this day, God. We just ask that this care, this word carries us through the week, through the month, through the year, even through this season that we all are experiencing, God. And we just ask that you download, God, your strategies and, and your solutions for this time and for this season. We praise you and we honor you for it's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. And just a few little housekeeping things. We have our agreements and recommendations for worshiping together online. So, you, you know, we all are connected via the web, web link. So if you can open your webcam, that would be wonderful. If you're on the phone, make sure you mute yourself so there's no feedback. Um, and also, if you're also on your computer, mute, mute your microphone um, so that we won't get any of the background noise that sometimes comes through. Keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking, so we can only have one person speaking at this at one time. If you have a message or a question, or if you want to speak, you can type it in the chat box, and um, we'll um, have you open up your mic if you want to say it verbally, or if you just want to type your chat your question in the chat box. Um, also, unmute your microphone and speak to the group when you have been recognized by a leader. And we have um, TIS leaders who are available in the chat to also answer questions, and um, they are going to be my backup if I don't see anything in the, in the chat, okay? So keep your microphone muted while worshiping unless you are the worship leader. Maintain a prayerful and worshipful worshipful attitude throughout service, choosing not to be offended so that God will be glorified. Okay. I am so excited to um, be teaching on this topic because normally what happens is that God will always give the message to the messenger first. And um, this is a topic, hey, I'm here. Can you guys see me now? Great, all right. Um, so our topic today is the family altar in times of crisis. And as we all know, we are experiencing some unprecedented things right now. There's a lot of things going on, not in our only in our nation, but in the world, in the global world at large. And I think that the Lord has a, a, a timely message for this season and for things to come to help us get through. Not to say that we're not going to be touched by the things that happen, but he is going to give us resources. He's going to give us strategies. He's going to give us solutions to get through times of crisis. So in talking about the family altar, we see altars throughout scripture. Altars represent a place of remembrance, forgiveness. They represent a, a place of covenant, a place of worship, and also a place of commemoration. In the old covenant, the, the object that was, that was originally erected time and time again to communicate with the Father, to communicate in the presence of God was an altar. It could be a single rock or loosely organized arrangement. So you can see from there. And in the Hebrew, it's, it's a misbiach. It's called a misbiach. So normally it was a loosely arranged uh, arrangement of large stones. So people were never far from one and could build one at, at a moment's notice. They, the altars were also are prominent in, in biblical images of worship and allegiance to God and was one of the most visible signs to one's devotion to the true God. Usually they were constructed with stones that have been fashioned without tools. So um, if, you, if you've ever seen, um, they call field stones, 
really large stones and they and 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 sometimes they are round sometimes they're elongated sometimes they um are are uh smooth but these were the actual stones that they took and they built the altar by hand without tools the altar was a raised platform on which fire was kindled and its form suggested a table or brazier the brazier was the element within the altar that actually held the fire so that middle component that acted as a heater to kindle the fire for the altar. Altars would be placed beneath the open sky where the smoke could ascend. And later when the altars were con constructed or for tabernacle worship in the wilderness for the, for the, and for the temple in Jerusalem, they were cast or covered in metal and the four corners rose forming points called horns. We see in the Old Covenant that altars most times were used as a place of slaughter, but they were also built at times to commemorate an event. Noah was the first man in the Bible to build an altar, and he did so as an expression of thanksgiving for God's protection during the flood. Now, some other examples of altars was Moses when he built an altar after writing the Torah. You can find that in Exodus 24. Uh, Abraham built an altar after a covenant promise and that was in uh, Genesis 13. And then you have Isaac who also built an altar after redigging his father's well. And it was a confirmation of God's uh, covenant blessing. So that's Genesis 26. And write these down and go back and read them because each one of these stories has a different element of why the altar was erected, but they're all relevant. They're all relevant to, to, to what, we're, what we're experiencing today. So Isaac, um, like I said, he built the altar, redigging his father's wells. And then Jacob built an altar after God charged, changed his name to Israel. And that's Genesis 31 through 33. And then Joshua also built an altar out of stones when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan with the ark. And that's Joshua 4. Some examples of altars of today. Uh, when I was growing up, I remember oftentimes we would visit people's homes and most of the time they were of the, I would say Baptist denomination and you would go into their home and somewhere in the foyer, there was some type of altar. There was always a family Bible Y'all remember those big, huge white family Bibles? It said Holy Bible on on the front of it. And in, in inside you had where you could put when people got married, you can put anniversary dates, you could put your genealogy, you could also put death uh, dates and certificates for commemoration in those Bibles. And this this one, if you all can see this picture, is actually our family Bible from when I was a child. My mom still had it. So I was able to get a picture of it. And I remember as a child looking through this particular Bible because it had so much beautiful artwork in it. They had all kinds of uh, pictures from Israel. You know, as a child thinking, oh, I might not ever visit this place, but this this is a beautiful place. This, the pictures were so beautiful. The artwork and the color photography was was always very beautiful. Now in the middle here is an example of some of the altars that I would see when I would go into people's homes, when we would go over to people's houses for dinner and visit. They usually always had some, maybe not as big as this, but some small table somewhere in their house that, that held their family Bible. The big, huge Bible in the front and there was always a cross or some candles. And sometimes they would also have uh, prayer books on the altar but it usually was the center of the person's home it was a place where um and uh i i come from a family of ministers so my father's an elder so most of the time when we visit other people's homes it was usually a pastor or an elder or a minister in a congregation that uh, had these and some lay people as well they they just grew up you know i don't know if it was out of tradition or was just something that every family just had in their homes. Even growing up being living with my grandparents, I always remember my grandmother had a huge, large family Bible. It was normally somewhere off in a corner on a special 
table and it it was considered sacred you know that area was considered sacred you didn't play around in there you didn't mess around in there it was okay for you to look but you 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 reverence what was there so this is just kind of an example of uh some of the family altars oh you, you still have a big bible from childhood <laughs> I think everybody probably remember those big, those big, huge, huge um, Bibles. And I don't know if you can find any like that now, because I've looked, I've searched to have one for my own family. But um, yeah, normally they were white and they had the gold lettering and they had all the beautiful artwork in it. So in in this time, um, as, as I was laying God and I was just you receiving everything that that I needed for my own family. You know, this has been a, a time of change for all of us. Never in millions of years will we have thought that we would be in this place where we are right now. We've had lockdowns, we've we've had you know, sickness and ge geophysical occurrences, which we're in that season now, the hurricane season. So we know that most most areas we know to expect those things. But this is different. This is a different time. We we are uh, some say forced to be home with more with our families, with our children. Some people are moving back home with their parents. Some are moving in with friends, depending on what their job situation is and whatever state they may be in, what is going on in that particular state. There has been a shift. There has been a change in how families are coming together and who is becoming family and who is becoming part of a family. And one thing that God is revealing, even in crisis, even in the turmoil, even in the uncertainty that he is going to use this hour to bring about an awakening, to bring about a newness, to be, bring about revelation, and to be, bring about a, a, a resurgence of love within the family. Even if you're, you don't have children, if you don't have um, a spouse, you have a family, you are responsible for someone. There is someone who is looking at you, whether it's a niece, a nephew, an uncle, a cousin, your, your parents, brothers and sisters, friends. There is someone in your life that God has assigned you to. There is someone in your life who is looking at your life as a reflection of what you say you represent and what you speak. You say that you live for the Lord, does your life reflect that? And in this time when we have been locked in our house, when we had been quarantined, I heard a lot of different things. Some people complained about it. Some people were, uh, you know, wondering what am I gonna do with my children? Because in our society, in American culture, children most of the time go off to school, even though that you know, some of us, we do homeschool. I homeschool my children. They've always been homeschooled. They've, they've never been to a public school. But for the majority of, of people in the United States, public school is the option. So you send your children away for eight hours a day to, to be in the presence of others. But what happened? The quarantine happened. So families were forced to be back in home with each other. Some people, to jobs transitioned and they had to do their jobs online. Some people lost their jobs. So we were all forced to come back home, but it wasn't for naught. It wasn't for naught. What the enemy went, meant for bad, God is turning for our good. I, we, we talk about revival, you know, their, their preachers have been talking years and still are about this great awakening that is company, coming, and they're talking about, oh, there's going to be stadiums full of people. We're going to have a great revival, and it's going to be in stadiums. It'll happen, but the, 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 the ignition, 
put your key in the car, you turn the ignition to get it started. The ignition of revival is going to happen in the home. That's where it's going to begin because God is putting us in a position where we can hear him better and we can teach our children diligently and that we can come and also commune with him in a sacred space and, and be able to hear him better because there's so many things that are going on right now. There are things to come that we need to be paying attention to and he needs our attention. He needs our focus. He needs our eyes. He needs our ears and we need to be in diligent prayer about what's coming ahead. TIS has been talking about, uh, uh, Apostle Marquita talked about the shaking. She has been talking about this for a very long time. We, we have uh, uh, been prophesying about the things to come and how we should be preparing and what, sh what, what, sh what we should be doing in this hour. The preparation is in the home. The preparation is in the home. Revival is going to be ignited in the home. Those wayward children, those wayward nieces and nephews, and, and, and even if your parents have turned away from God, they, I work a lot with, with uh, youth. And one of the things that uh, I hear many of them say is that, yeah, I grew up in the church, but you know, my parents would act one way at home and then they were a different way at church. So that's why I don't go to church no more. I don't deal with them because they're all hypocrites. Well, guess what? Those kids are coming back home. And when they come back home, and I'm speaking to parents now, it's okay to say, you know what? I messed up. I made a mistake. I didn't do everything that the precepts of God ha had for me to do order for me to do, uh, uh, mandated that I do in teaching you how to live for God. I didn't always get it right. And for that, I ask for you to forgive me. What a great example that would be to hear that, for a child to hear from their parent that, you know what, I messed up. I didn't always get it right. But I know that I know that I know that living for God is what's going to get us through this. Living for God is what's, what is going to be the foundation of our family from here on out. Those children are coming back. And even if you don't have children, you have someone who's watching you. You have someone that you may be responsible for as a mentor. You have someone in your life that is watching your life because they hear you speak about being a believer or being a Christian and you live for and you live for God, but does your life reflect that? So even in our homes, as as we we we, we look to uh coming to the altar, coming back to the altar and surrendering all to God and looking to Him to rebuild what the enemy tried to tear down, rebuilding families, rebuilding relationships, rebuilding friendships, coming to that altar. And, and even if we don't have what's, you know, this fancy thing in this, in this picture, have it all set up all pretty with the flowers and the, and the Bible and the candle, do you have a space in your home where you commune with God? It could be a big chair, a big comfortable chair sitting at the table, reading your word, memorizing scripture with your loved ones. That is what's going to ignite the revival. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see a uh, 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 healing. We're going to see deliverance, but it's going to begin in the home. And from that, from that will ignite revival within our nation. Right now, our, our nation is, is, is on a kind of a, a, a dying downward spiral and, and it is, it's like this up and down thing when when crisis come we want to turn to God but then when everything is okay we kind of put God on the back burner and and only pick him up when when there's a crisis but there is a remnant and the remnant in their homes are teaching their children diligently they're they're, they're laying before God. They're teaching their children how to fast. They're teaching their children how to memorize scripture. They're doing it themselves. They're surrendering it all to God. And they're saying, God, we need your word on the altars of our hearts. 
And as they build that, they're building the altar within their home to say, for God I live and for God I die. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I'm excited about it because even though my children are young, I enjoy reading the word with them. And, and even in the changes that have come, we've gotten away from some things and we're bringing those things back, reading the word with them in the evenings before they go to bed. We always pray together. But the one thing that, that I think is uh, the most powerful in it all is, is hearing them memorize scripture and being able to bring that scripture back up when they need it they understand that the word is what's going to carry me through even as a child they understand that when i'm afraid i all i do you know my my youngest son he remembers uh when when god told joshua do not be afraid have courage so when he's afraid he says that do not be afraid joshua. have courage that's not his name though but he says it like he's Joshua, do not be afraid, have courage. Those are the things that are gonna carry us through. And um, in building the altar, we also have to look at the things that we have made altars in our lives. What have you made as an altar? What has taken your attention from God and 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 uh has taken up your time and has taken your focus is it television is it food is it social media is it the media in general and what's come what's happening with elections and what's gonna happen what who's gonna do what and who's saying what have we gotten so focused on the wrong things and made those things our altars that we can't hear god anymore that we're missing his messages to us. And that's just something to uh, think about, even in this information age, even in this fast paced age that we are living in, what have we made our altars? Now I'm gonna pause for just a little bit and see if there is anyone who wants to say anything or have any questions. Yes, I just want to say a quick thing about um, this is Michelle um, about what you're talking about. Um, I know that prior to um, the whole COVID thing, when I was praying about um, you know some of the things that were happening. I really felt that heavy that, you know, um, almost that like some of the kids of believers are in danger, um, you know, and God needs to kind of gather and bring all the sheep back home. So all these things that you're speaking about can be established again. But of course, you know, sometimes in the beginning when things first change, the, the, the fear will try to jump on us that will cause us to think that what is that the change that has come is a bad thing when it's not actually a, a bad thing but we later find out about that after we've learned to sit still and wait in God's presence and ask him okay what's going on you know he, he I know I felt like he really wanted to strengthen the, um, the family um, especially of the that's all. And, and I just want to piggyback, I just want to piggyback on that too, um, because I, I I think what Michelle is saying is so so solid because what I've observed is yeah we a lot of people we we have no choice but to put our kids in school so we can work a job, and what we a lot of us don't realize is the school has changed how to do stuff. Now you have to opt out of, of the perversion they make mandatory in some instances. As before, it used to be you had to get permission to talk about a particular thing with the child. They had to have to send them a permission slip. It's the flip now. So it's like you have to stay on top of what's going on 
because your child is going to come home and see a whole bunch of stuff that you weren't ready to teach them just yet. But the school said, hey, we're going to teach them this is our curriculum. And so it's, it's, it's not a, um, uh, it's not an attack on parenting per se, uh, from what I'm saying, but I see that as an attack on, it's an indoctrination of the masses. And if we aren't active in um, our children's rearing and stuff like that, we actually put them on an altar, but not to the God that we serve, but to another God, AKA Molek. So the bottom line is um, this whole thing, uh, it's not coincidental. Everything, God saw this way before did. And so with the whole family unit, the family altar coming back and rededicating ourselves to parenting and, and so forth, um, it's a beautiful thing. So I, I really appreciate what you're saying. Yes, those are all good points. And even even um, in what you were saying about, you know, the children being in, in public school, we it's there's still a responsibility that we have and we have to we have to find the time there's still a responsibility um that that i think parents kind of gotten got away from because they started putting other things you know in in other people's hands and i'll give you an example uh growing up of course we always had a uh, sunday school then you had church and then you had evening service and during the week we had what you called um ypww you had bible study you had uh home and foreign mission we had all kinds of stuff going on during the week that that centered around the church and that centered around um us learning from the church but even in that Whose responsibility it is it? Was it the church's responsibility, or was it the home's responsibility? Where was the altar supposed to be in the home first, and those other things just be reinforcement of oh, it's already already happening, already occurring, or should be occurring in the home? And the 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 scripture that comes to mind um, is. Um, uh, what is it? Deuteronomy, I believe is six and seven. It says, and, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest in walkest by the way and when, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Everywhere you go, at every moment, at 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 every uh, uh, opportunity, we are to be giving God's word to our children. We are to be teaching His precepts. We are to be um, uh, uh, establishing them in for them in their hearts, so that when they're older, they can they have that to pull on as well. Um, I, there, there are times when my children can be just walking by me to go to the kitchen. And most of the times they're going to the kitchen because they're boys and they're eating up everything. So they're walking by me to go to the kitchen and I'll just lay my hand on them, say a little prayer, bless them and go on by my way. And in the beginning, they were kind of like, you know, every time I walk by, you know, she's like, this, she's touching me. Now it's like they just expect it. If they pass me on the on the way, so they just stop. Like <laughs> she's gonna do it, so I might as well just give in to it. But um, what Michelle and 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 Watson were saying is is so true, and um, and even even if you you like I said, if you don't have children, you yourself. Where have you created a sacred place to commune with God? Where have you created a space to commemorate, to worship, to honor, to, to pull on him, to go for forgiveness? Where in your home have you created that space? And, and you know, we, we have a physical space. Like we have a designated space that's just strictly for for prayer. So, um, and it's just like a little small, um, uh, what do you call it? Like a uh, nook 
within our home that has a big, large pillow. And my kids are used to it now. So even when when they just sometimes they just feel like going up there and lying down on the pillow in that space because it's a space where where there's constant prayer going on throughout the day. We have a designated space that that we use for prayer. But the altar, the altar where we commune as a family to to uh, uh, to to hear from God and to, and to come together and pray and to worship and, and, and to read his word. The altar is what's going to carry us through what we're experiencing right now, with the crisis that people are going through right now. You, when, when you come together and, and, and you, you join with your family, you, you join with, with, with your friends, uh, it could even be a neighbor. You know, uh, we yeah. we don't have a um, family. Family is it comes in different forms. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of us are adopted into families. So, you know, don't just think that it's just reserved for people who are 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 building families because they have a, a spouse and and children. No, who are your friends? that you know that are in need of God's word, who, who are in need of God's healing, who are in need to and, and, and need to know that God loves them and that he he's 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 tugging on the door of their heart to say come to me that I have the answer. I am the way, the truth and the life. What about those neighbors that that grumpy neighbor who who won't speak to you but you you continue to wave to them and 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 you bless them. That's the key. That's where it, that's where the change is going to come. That's where the awakening is going to come. That's where the revival is going to come. When we 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 usher in within our homes God's presence, and even more so now, it's needed. And I I mean I I just I can't stress enough how we have got to be intentional and take the time to commune with God even in this hour because the next four months, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to occur. There's going to be a lot of changes, not only in our country, but there's going to be a lot of changes globally. And we are going to have to have a space. I see God, God is already showing how he is... Uh, He's doing a twofold thing where there are some churches that are meeting in person, but he's doing this thing online as well. He's creating another form, but he's also creating hubs of people who are getting together and they're worshiping together in their homes. They are creating an altar in their home and they're holding on to the horn of the altar and they're pleading to God for this nation. They are coming together in hubs in their homes and and I, I see it as as like a um um and I'm about to tell my age on this y'all remember the light bright remember remember the light bright imagine you have a light bright you're putting all those little pegs and the light that's illuminating from behind it is what's light what lights up the pegs those are the hubs those are the homes. We're going to see God's presence just light up all over the world. If you could just envision a map of the world and see those lights just spark up like a light bright as you put in that peg and it lights up, the light that's being illuminated behind it lights each one of those colors and those pegs. That's the vision that I see as people take in and 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 they um uh listen and 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 take heed to what God is saying. And I, I mean I just I don't have all the words to to really formulate what he's getting ready to do with this. But if 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 you if you all just um even sometime this week, 
just look around in your home and say, where is it that I can create a sacred space for my children and for myself and my spouse and my friends where we can come together and we can sit and we can commemorate, we can commune with God and we can pull on the altar and, and, and cry out for, for our friends and our family and our children and our nieces and our nephews who have turned their backs from God and really cry out for, cry out for their hearts, cry out for them to turn to him, cry out for, the, for them to to uh for for God to to cover them and to draw them to him where in my home can i designate a space like that where we can come together and and do that and we see in even in in some of these slides most of these families are in their living room space they are uh sitting on a couch praying together if that's what you have make it so make it make it a designated space to uh commune with god i'm gonna pause Let's see what we got going on here in the chat hey um minister tomorrow could i add something are you able to hear me I can hear you. I'm sorry. I can hear you. That's fine. Um, I, I'm excited about what you, you're saying. I, I oftentimes think about when I see um, before COVID-19, I would see a group of kids riding bicycles or skateboarding and or just, you know, um, maybe the, the misfits walking in, in crowds and, and the Lord would just be like, you know, these are the groups that I want. You know, I'm going to raise up people out of these groups, you know, to, to represent. Um, to come together, like you're saying, you know, in, in these small pocketed groups, whether they're family or not, because in the beginning, what you said was, um, even if you're not a family, but you know, you're, you're calling this one and that one, you know, you're coming together, it can be on your job, it can be um, in the neighborhood, especially because this is the hub, you know, where we live. But if you have people living with you or whatever the case is, and I often think about an acts in the beginning where, uh, it talks about all the, you know, Jews were coming from all over the land to um, come up for Shavuot, which is one of the high holy days, one of the three where um, there's a trek up to Jerusalem. And you, you had all these Jews from different backgrounds, and then the Holy Spirit broke out, and, and all these, these tongues were being spoken, and the men were like, how is it that they know my language? How is it that they're able to relate to me? And this, this is what I'm hearing you talk about right now. Uh, family can be created. As God, as we have a secret place in our heart and we, we give him a home, then the home extends. It's kind of like this ripple effect um, where family is brought in, but also there's this relatability that, hey, you speak my language. So automatically it's like you become my, you know, people will adopt people, my auntie, my uncle, my, my grandma, my grandma, you know, this, this, and this, and the other. Um, but he is absolutely doing it. And and I, I just bless God for this. We are living stones. And he's he's taking whatever he can. He knows who is supposed to sign together. And he's allowing those groups to come together, those pocketed groups for such a time. Amen. That that is that is so true. And um I have a friend who is a, a prophetic artist. And he is, and, and I'm going to say his name because I want y'all to look him up. His name is Ruben Arana, and he does worship word art. Well, prior to COVID, 2019, I think 2018, he, he would go into a park. And what he would do was he would set up his easels, and he would just go out into the park and paint. And he would broadcast it online while he was doing it. And one thing that happened was there was these two little boys that were playing in that park every day. And they would come by and they would watch him paint. So for the next few weeks, as he continued to do that, those two boys always looked for him. They expected him to be in that park. So what he started doing was he started prophetically speaking to into their lives and allowing them to paint with him. 
So they came to expect that when they would go to the park, he, he would be there. And it became like those of us online who were watching became their aunties and their uncles. So when he would be broadcasting and they would show up, he would allow them to speak to us through whether it was Facebook Live or YouTube Live or whatever. And he began to minister to them. And to see the shift in those little boys, I don't, I don't know these kids. You know, I just saw them through what he was doing at the at the park. But to see the shifts, and it became, it came to the point where when we knew Ruben was going to go live, we were expecting to see those kids there with him. And you could, you could, you could see a light come upon them. You could see the uh, a change in their heart. You could see the curiosity open up, and they wanting to know more about God and 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 the talent that He was given to do this prophetic art, and how God was giving it to to him and showing them, and that they could do it as well. And He ministered to them right there in the park. So God is doing the unusual. And he and he's he's doing it in a way where um, it's not like we're gonna think. It's not like we think. And 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 I believe there's that that there's there are gonna be souls that are coming coming to God. I believe there's gonna be a great revival. But there's something about the altar of the home where God is going to show out. He is going to bless. He is going to heal. He is going to set free and he is going to deliver right in the home. And that is going to extend out into our communities because we, we know and, and, and um, uh, um, Apostle has in the, um, the word revealed, if you all have not, uh, downloaded that and watch those videos, there's a whole entire section that that deals with uh, the family and the family life and 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 how the Lord uses the family is in 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 times of crisis in, in times of transition, in times of change. and that that section in itself, <laughs> that could take you on a whole nother study. Just just that section by itself could take you on a on a whole nother study. But um I see it. I see it just as clear. I see, you know, uh even those parents who don't know where their children are, who may have run away from home and have not heard from them. They're going to get phone calls because they have made an altar in their home calling out to God for the hearts of those those young people. They're gonna get phone calls. They may even get a knock at the door and say, mom, dad, I'm home, I'm back. Open up your arms and embrace them and welcome them. Like the father in uh, with the prodigal son, he didn't ring his finger and say, you shouldn't have. No, he embraced him. He had a feast that he celebrated, and I see a celebration coming for those who have left, who have 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 who 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 lost their their um, um, sense of longing and 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 lost their sense of belonging. I see that God is pulling; He's going to pull them back, and it's going to be on the altar. Is going to be on the altar of the home where he is going to turn those things around. Those families who have been separated, he's going to turn those things around. He's going to move in such a way that they're going to look around and they're going to say, this can't be anybody but God. It can't be anybody but him. He's the only one that's going to be able to get the credit because it's, it's, it's going to be so amazing that they won't they won't even have the words to explain how it happened. And I'm talking years, people who have been out of people's lives for years, they're going to see a change and a transition. 
But not only that, even what looking ahead, what is coming, not only for our nation, but the global world, the altar of the home can change the trajectory of what the enemy has planned for this nation and for the global world. The altar of the home can change the trajectory. The altar of the home can scatter the enemy's camp. The altar of the home can squash the plans of the enemy. Um, I was thinking about, um, I was talking to this lady and she had mentioned, you know, about, you know, God is coming back soon and he's going to crack the sky open. And uh, she was like, you know, I just can't wait for him to come back. And I'm, and I'm just listening to this. And then in the back of my mind, I'm saying, but everybody in your family is not ready. What about those people? See, for years, we've had this kind of escapism the theology, it's like swing low, sweet chariot, come on, God, just go and crack the sky and take us home. But we forget that there's still people who need to know. We have to have it in our heart to not want to see them, see, see them lost, see our family lost, see mm -hmm. our friends lost see our neighbors lost. We have to have it in our heart to 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 uh, want more of God for them as well. And not just just have this this mindset that, well, you know, I'm doing what I need to do. And and I'm going to, you know, be with the Lord at his return. But don't we want more people there don't we want our friends and our family and, and 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 our neighbors and our children and our nieces and our nephew don't we want it for them as well we can't be selfish about god's goodness we can't be selfish about what he's getting ready to do we can't be selfish about the move that is going to occur so i i would you know God is charging us to stand up. He's charging us to hold up the banner. He's charging us to 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 be the mentors, to to be the the um the light, to be the salt so that people can see that yeah, crisis is going to happen. Chaos is going to happen. There's uncertainty. And yes, it, we, 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 it may be around us. We may be touched by some of it. But at the end of the day, there is a man that we can call on for solutions, for strategies, for, for, for revelation on what we should be doing in this season. We don't have to wander. We don't have to wonder what we should be doing. Because if we're coming to the altar and we're seeking him, and even in this time where the feasts are coming up, we're in a season of feasts. This is a very busy time. This is a time of consecration. At the altar, we can consecrate. We can consecrate ourselves. We can consecrate our families. We can, we can con consecrate our gifts and, 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 and consecrate the assignments that God has given us. We're coming up on a season of fasting, but at the altar, we can meet him through in, in all of it, through all of it. So I'm going to pause right here, see what we got going on in the chat. Does anybody else want to say anything? Yes, I'm um, Patricia Booker. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to um, make a statement. Um, and say, first of all, thank you for the confirmation uh, because um, I feel since the pandemic, I have been ministering more uh, to uh, just parents and, and neighbors um, 
three of my neighbors um, that I would always wave at coming out of the house, going to work during the morning. Um, one has bone cancer and she came over and bought me some watermelons and oranges and cucumbers and tomatoes out of her garden. And um, when she told me she had bone cancer, it, it just put a fear in my heart for her because I would always see her in her yard just um, cutting the grass, fixing her flowers, just doing all sorts of things that, you know, probably have her in her happy place. And so um, I had went inside um, my home and I just weep for her and I cried and I prayed for her. And then maybe about 30 minutes later, she came back over and bought me the fruits and the vegetables and we just were talking. And now she said to me, she said, you know, um, young lady, um, she said, I know the Lord. I said, bless God. You know, when I had just got through praying and asking God, did she know him? And, and, and um, to see, you know, for me to see if she did know him, I would ask her. But um, with that, that piece and also building an altar in, the, in my own home, because I, I never had one, you know, for my family to come and pray and um, worship and we do Bible, Zoom Bible study with my, my adult children, and they're in their homes, and we're in our homes. Um, to me, the pandemic is just a blessing. And also with, um, I have six young ladies that I um, talk with every day and um, do Bible study with. So um, I know people probably would think, hey, this pandemic was just awful for them, but it has been a blessing. Uh, for me to be able to serve God in a way that he has called me to um, serve him. And um, this one more statement with um, one of my other neighbors, uh, she had put on Facebook, she needed um, some money to pay her bills. And I had knew um, some background on her mismanaging money. So I just was like, mm, oh, well. So I had pulled in my yard and I saw her um, sitting on her porch. And so I got up to kind of wave at her. And the Holy Ghost said, go give her some money. And I was like, oh, no. And I went back to the the stuff I, the enemy was showing me with the mismanagement. So when I got in the house, I couldn't even go upstairs. So the Holy Spirit said it again. And I told my son, I said, okay, I got to go back out. And so when I went out, I went to her and she came outside and we were just talking. I gave her a hug. So I slipped the money in her hand and she hugged me and was crying and stuff. And it was just, just blessed, you know, and I'm just kind of full about it, but we don't know what God is, well, we do know what he's going to do, what he can do, but we have to be um, open, and our ears and our hearts have to be listening to what he has told us to do now, because there's so many people that are assigned to us that we could miss it, you know, so I just wanted to share that, because what you're saying it's nothing but confirmation, and I'm here getting my classroom ready, and I had to stop. I said, oh, my God. I said, she is just sharing confirmation. Everything you said since the call has came on, I have been experiencing it. I'm a um, preschool teacher, and to be able to speak with the parents about how uh, the book of Deuteronomy tells them that they are the ones that are responsible for raising these children up in the adoration of the Lord, and we're just the helpers. You know, so I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry for taking so much of your time, but I just want I bless God for you because everything you have said from the, the hour that you came on was nothing but, but confirmation from my life. So I just thank you and bless God for you. Now let somebody else talk. Amen. Praise God. That is so that is that is so wonderful. And being a preschool teacher, you have the little hearts. You you have the influence of the little hearts, and that's that's a very good age because they're they're so open. They they are um they are they're curious and and they haven't been tainted. <laughs> by by the culture so they're more open to 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 hear and and to 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 obey and and to just listen and that's just a good influence to have because even in um when we look at different industries and 
like you know the education system we look at the uh, arts and entertainment industry like i was saying about you know my friend that's an artist is a prophetic artist and working in theater and things like that there are different areas of influence that god is bringing many of us into and he's doing it in such a way and i'm gonna say this right now there are companies that are going to be losing their ceos there are companies that are going to be losing their board members there are companies that are going to be losing the influencers the decision makers in their companies god is opening up those positions because he's looking to move his people in those positions he's looking to put believers in those positions who are going to take it and 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 turn it and shift it in a way that is going to bring glory to him whether it's education whether it's business whether it's entertainment whether it's in the financial industry prophetically speaking we're going to see positions open up and given up that is going to make opportunity for believers to move in and to influence in such a way that is going to bring honor to things that have brought detriment and it's going to change the trajectory of where we see the culture is going it doesn't look like it right now but you got to go beyond what it seems like okay we got some more stuff going on here in the chat let me see Okay, so someone wants more examples of ways to create an altar in the home. What, was somebody trying to say something before I say this? I was. Okay. Okay. Um, no, I, I, I just wanted to share um, just, just the importance of bringing, bringing things to the family. Um, at my job, I had, they know that I have, um, Sabbath off, but I put in a request a while ago, some of the days that um, CIS was going to be together as far as um, the immersion and, and um, yeah, um, you know, a few of the weeks. And this week is supposed to be the week of the fast. So I, I um, because I know that they automatically know that I have off or the Saturdays off. Um, I was really surprised to see them put me on a Saturday. No. And I said to um, you know, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't right to my family. So now um I I I spoke to management and at my job you have to have um you know on my days of um, availability and I told them I can work every other day but you know Saturday is my Sabbath and so I spoke to the management about her scheduling me and then I followed up with a note to remind her that you know um, I don't work on Saturday and I, I just asked do I need to write another note just to remind her because I know she has a lot of things um, going on and she said um you can't and so last night i was sitting at my desk and i was praying and i said lord i can go back and forth with her but i need you to reveal to her the importance of this day um to you and so the spirit just led me to open up the day on on, on my phone on, 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 on 
And so I opened it and I placed the shofar over it and I started to pray. And so this morning, the Lord he reminded me and showed me to bring it to um, Washington and let's do the same thing, which is again, just a confirmation of everything what you're saying. We can do things independent. And I know I was listening to Apostle too. Um, America's will. And we are accustomed to being, you know, independent. And, you know, we have the spirit of God. In us. We can go in our own little corner and pray and, and stuff of that nature. But it, how much more is it pleasing in the heart of God when we have a safe place in the home to bring it, to bring the things that are affecting our household together and everybody joining in prayer over? You know, allow the Lord to just um, set things in order. Because I do believe that the Lord wants to reveal himself to this young lady. Um, I believe that was, I believe that was, was on my heart. Um, but if it, but it might not be the way I'm thinking. It might be through a dream. It might be, you know, through um, just a conversation with other people. I have no idea, but I, I not wanting to limit him, but being open to whatever he puts in our spirits to do regarding of the, um, regarding of any situation that we bring to him. Because again, we're not aware of all of the moving pieces. So I'm just, you know, I have this several issue going on, so I'm just praying about that also. But, uh, yes, I want the 12 go off. <laughs> and um, I just believe that as we have a family, we need to pray for it. Um, that the Lord is going to do something now. And that is something that you can, you can definitely, um, be a make as a prayer point when when you when you come come to your altar and and when you have your time of prayer um i have a little um container like a prayer jar prayer prayer box really it's really a box that um i put those kinds of things in so when there are people who either request prayer or if there's situations that I know of, you know, I'll just write it down and and put it in my prayer box. Or sometimes I um I use my journal because I have a, pr a prayer journal as well. But those are the types of things that I put in there because you have a burden for it. So clearly there's an assignment there, and it it to be something that is um, intentional and even if you um, you know it may not necessarily be something that you bring together with your family but it's clearly something that that is a burden for you that God is showing you for this this particular young lady so that that's something that you can add you can add to to um, your time at your at your family altar. Now there was a question about people who are single, people who are single or people living with other people, how can you create a family, uh, create a family altar, or create an altar within the home for yourself? Um, before I was married and I had my apartment and everything, I had a corner of my apartment that was just just had like one little chair or whatever that I would just sometimes just sit in that chair, just read my word. Sometimes I would uh, uh, pray in that space. And originally it wasn't intentional. That just happened to be like a comfortable space that that I just um, would gravitate to. So over time, it became a space where I would sit and read my Bible, study, and um, just use that, that space to pray. So if you're, um, even, even uh, if you have a porch, like go outside on, on a porch or a balcony 
and you can, you know, if you have a, a place that you can put like a, a chair or something like that, make a designated space where you commune with God and, um, and pray. Another thing is, um, even in your room, if you have a space within, within your bedroom that's not your bed, because you don't want to fall asleep or get distracted, but if you have a space within your bedroom, a little corner, um, some people have even used their closets and got in their closets, but just a space where you feel comfortable that that you don't have to verbally say if you're living with someone or something like that, you don't have to verbally say that you're making this your sacred space. But over time, if you sit in that space and you pray in that space and you read your word in that space, people start to notice. If you do it at a certain time, they start to notice. They're like, oh, every, every day around two o'clock, you go in this space and you you just quiet in that space and you sit in that space and you read. What's what's going on? What is what is it about that space that you you do this at a certain time every day? That will then open up the opportunity for you to share and invite. Maybe they want to to um, learn about altars and the family altars. And we know that there are some, um, who said, oh, in the backyard when it's warm, yes. Oh, I prefer a little bit of shade, but yeah. <laughs> but um, we know that there are other altars that have been erected that are not to the Lord. So um, it will give Hello, um, Minister Tamara. I think that she was knocked off possibly. Are you still there, Minister Tamara? Okay. She was saying. Elder Rowe, you said that you have no sound or pick. Does anyone have any sound or picture at this time? If you do, just in the chat, if you can put um, yes. Does anyone have sound or picture? We, okay, we have sound and picture. Okay, so it looks like we, we lost Mar, um, Minister Tamara. Yeah. He's, um, we're gonna see if we can get her back on. All right. In the meantime, as we're sitting and waiting, this is this is a, a good time to actually practice our family altar and just pray into um, here she is. Great time to actually execute what she's talking about. Amen. El uh, Minister Tamar, are you back with us? Okay. Amen. And so, yeah, I think it's everyone. So if um, we can pray right now, just ex execute what she's been talking about, exercise our family altar with the Lord. Um, this would be a good time to do so. So amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this atmosphere. Father, we say that you will have your way. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For you are the Lord of heaven and earth. You are the Lord over the, the, the air. Father, when we just bless you for what you're doing, even now you're transforming hearts, you're transforming minds, you're transforming um, just behaviors and actions. Even now, Father, we just bless you for what you're doing. We say that the enemy cannot destroy what you have already begun, the good work that you've begun already, Lord. The enemy ha cannot destroy, Father. We just bless you right now, Lord, for having an opportunity to spar, hallelujah, in your presence, Lord, to execute what you have put before us, Father. We bless you for the connectivity of, of uh, Minister Tamara, Father, that she will be able to come back online, both in voice and in image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father. Hallelujah for th that being regained even now, Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, for being able to shift, Lord, when issues happen, Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank you for the execution of what you are teaching us to, to actually exercise the, the, the prayers on the altar that we lay before you, God. Hallelujah. We thank you that it is done. And we bless you for it all in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. If I could add something really quickly while we're waiting, um, one of the things I was going to mention earlier, and, and this is how important this is, this topic, there are lots of altars, like she was saying, um, Minister Tamara was saying, and, um, and, and I've been seeing this since September 1st. I've been cooped up in the house quite a bit, but, you know, when he tells me to venture out to get this and that, you know, whatever the case is, immediately... And, and we know this is the case. The enemy waits for opportunities. Going out to September 1st, you can see in stores just how the enemy is has been waiting to en engulf um, the culture. <laughs> just you go to the store, you can see the holiday um, culture, just all types of holiday stuff out. We're going to put everything out. Everything for the next four months is out and um, in full force. Uh, not for us to be afraid, but it's just like, wow. Um, and so there are altars. The yes, enemy is ramping up. Yes. Are you back? Okay. Okay. Seems there is some work going on outside. Okay. That has, has, um, I don't know if it was a circuit or power surge or something's going on outside. There's some trucks out there doing some, some work out there. So, but you guys can hear me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Okay. Was there anything else someone wanted to add? I was actually adding before you came back on, um, just highlighting everything you said and, and, and mentioning the fact that, um, and I think you mentioned this earlier, there are other altars. And we, we're, we're starting to see this, you know, typical thing for this time of the year. Um, but for some reason that the enemy thinks that he has a foothold, there's, there's, a, there's more of a um, a presence of, of things happening this year, and which is to be expected. But for us to also understand that God is, he, he's inviting us to this, but he's saying that if you do not set up, just us as general, all of us, if, if, if you don't use what I've given you, you know, as a gift to set up altars, understand that the, the space is going to be filled. It will be filled because um, like I said, they're just walking around in society um, just this week, um, just the Lord is just putting stuff on alert. You, you, you see, you see stuff ramping up and it's just like, oh my gosh, you know? And so we, God is inviting us to be a part of his family so that others, um, who may have feel, felt dismissed or whatever the case is, and they're seeking other altars. So they know where they came from, you know, and, and know that they have a father, um, and that those other gods, they're not going to talk. They can't do anything. They, they, they have no mouths. They can't do any of the sort to come back, like you said earlier, come back home. But we have to be in our spots. We, we must be in our spots. We must have the altar built in order for there to be a holy fire that is kindled so that people can see the holy fire of God. 
not just burning from us individually, but collectively, but starting individually, because it is going to be so key, especially in the upcoming seasons. Like you've been saying it the whole time, these next four months are going to ramp up and, and, and you're, you're starting to kind of see that incline. And again, not for us to be afraid, but to be on our post because it, this will be a season as we've been hearing like never before. And we have an opportunity to be a light like never before. I'm glad that you brought that up um, because, you know, we do see in the old covenant as well that there were other altars that were built to false gods and be, they use these elements for, for the worship of, of pagan gods and, and to represent their allegiance to the pagan gods. And one of the things that the, uh, the Israelites did when they conquered in, in certain areas was they tore those things down. So we, we have the authority to tear down false altars to false gods. We have the authority to do as the Israelites did when they conquered, I believe it was uh, Deuteron Deuteronomy 12, I believe it is, where they tore down altars um, and they conquered the promised land. So as a, as a, follower, as a follower of Yeshua, um, we have that authority and we got to look first at the altars of our hearts what is it that we have made an altar in our heart that is not pleasing to him? And we start there. And then from there, we start within our home. What are the things that are taking up our attention and our time that is not of him and that is not for this season, you know, so that we can focus on what he is saying to us and focus on what he is doing and focus on the move that is happening because he is calling us. He is calling a remnant to, to hear and obey and to, and, 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 and to listen and to move in ways that, that, that we haven't seen before. So we have to pay attention to those things and we have to recognize those things and we have to uh, uh, be intentional, be intentional about that. And, and even with, you know, a certain holiday that's coming up, <laughs> you know, the month has, it has just got started. We're just in September. And already when you go into the stores, you see all the paraphernalia, you see all the decorations and for, for Halloween and, and things of, things of that nature. But I would challenge all of us to, um, create a sacred space and to um, lay a foundation for for uh, creating an altar that is 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 commemorate of what God is doing and what he has done now the cornerstone of that of course we know is the word there's nothing without the word we have nothing without the word so our Bible, our the scripture should be the cornerstone of that. And, and I have so many different types of Bibles, but I have one Bible in particular that I only use for just reading. I don't mark in it. I don't make any notes in it. It's just for me to intentionally focus on the words that are on the page and not be distracted by any, any other notes or anything like that. And it's that Holy Spirit minister in that way and hear what God is saying through his word. So make that the, the cornerstone for laying the foundation of your altar is, is, is God's word. Now creating a sacred space. What items create a family altar that point you to God? Think about those things and tear, tear down the idols, whether it's um, idols in your heart, or whether it's it's physical things in your home that may not be representative of of who God is. Um, we went through a a period where we had gone through our home and really looked at um, books and uh, whatnots and knickknacks and figurines that mostly had either been inherited or given to us by people and 
we really examined those things and we looked at them and said, okay, is this representative of what, of who we are in God? Is this, is this in some way causing a distraction? Is it inviting spirits into our home that, that shouldn't be, that are not welcome? And sometimes you have to do that. You have to go through your home and, and figure out if there, there are things that are idols that you may not be aware of and, and get rid of those things. Um, another thing is uh, Shabbat. Um, if you're new to, to, to Shabbat, a family altar is the perfect, perfect opportunity to, to begin observing Shabbat coming together as a family, coming together um, with your friends and, and, and honoring Shabbat and being a voice and, you know, showing others that there is a time of sacredness when you do this. It's a time of honor and it, then you're in at the same time transferring that faith. So, um, people are more receptive. They'll be more receptive in, in that way. And then it's an opportunity to live out your faith. It's an opportunity to be intentional. It's an opportunity to be, to, to live out the faith practically and uh, make it a lifestyle, not just another thing you have to do, but it becomes a lifestyle. And in this season, I think that is so necessary and is so needed that we just don't think of these things as 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 something to check off check off of a list, but we're intentional about it, and it's a part of our life. It's a part of who we are. It becomes a part of of our hearts. Anything else anyone wants to add or any questions? Anyone else wants to say anything? Um, it, just from what I just heard you said, it is possible to live a life of ministry and just life in general. Like what I'm hearing you say is that both can actually be done. And you know, in, in, in regular Christendom, it, it may not seem that way that both can be done, that I can be, um, have a, a full life, a, an abundant life, you know, and, and, and a life in which I serve the Lord fully, and the two can be one. This is what I'm hearing you say, um, because we don't often see that expressed in our society. And so it, it is truly what the Lord is doing, and, and people in this time, his people, his children, we are really his first fruits because this has not been seen since the first century. You know, we, we're, we're like the first century. The other, um, it, we're coming into that because we, we haven't fully arrived at it yet. And, and like you said, greater is coming. And we're preparing our hearts, the altar, to be able to receive. Because, see, we're preparing the altar, like you said, but we got to be able to receive the fire that comes, the, fi the holy fire that comes. That is what we're preparing our altar for. And so it's like this is stage one, but it's we're not even counting the stages because we're we're, we're looking at Yeshua, and so it, it it it's a beautiful transition that you're describing right now. I love it. And speaking of looking at Him, when we get our eyes, we take our eyes off of Yeshua. We take our eyes off of the altar or what He's calling us to to sacrifice unto Him, and we look at what this is. You know, this is doing that. Who's doing what? We take our or what the Joneses are doing. That is when we leave the altar and we leave behind and, and, and God, he doesn't want us to do that. Um, he, he never leaves us. Like he, what he says is exactly true in his word. He never leaves or forsakes. He is a good father. We absolutely leave him. So we find that we're not receiving comfort. We're not receiving all the things that he promised that we would have life and life more abundantly. Then we've left the altar. We're looking at something else. And, it, and I love in Ecclesiastes, it talks about and just gives a clear script of, of why that happens. It's because of the envy of man, the envy of brethren. It goes way back to, to um, Cain and, and his brother Abel. 
and were Abel presented a better offering than Cain, and Cain was furious. He was he was jealous of it. He took on the the nature. Or Elder Nicky often says this that the that, that Satan is a the the biggest orphan <laughs> ever, which is so true. And so we got to be very careful of that because you know as we you know been agreeing with and, and Ecclesiastes says our eyes and ears are always open. And so who are we to believe that we can? make a, a decision and inform one at that if we have not gone to Yeshua, the one who is the altar, he prepares the altar, we we, we have to check in. And, and what I'm hearing you say is not just individually, but now we got to bring our households in. And now the question is, you know, in our families, who is our family? You know, who's our brother? Because that was the question that Cain was asked. Cain, where's your brother? Where is he? Where's your brother? And so God has yet allowing us to revisit this question again. And it, it is one to re be revisited every day, I believe, as, as we answer that question. I uh, often ask, you know, God is asking us, Adam, where are you? You know, once we've been identified and we identify with Christ, now I can answer the question, hopefully without killing my brother off, but I can answer the question before it's even asked, where is my brother? And so thank you so much. This, this is really good. And we know it's good because of the in interruptions that have happened today. Um, but th this is absolutely necessary for the seasons that we're going into. So thank you again for your, your sacrifice um, in, in delivering this message. Thank you. That was so much good insight there. So much good input. The precepts of God as a lifestyle. We got to get this down in our heart. And, and once we get it down in our heart, there there's no stopping us. There's no stopping what God is going to do. There's no stopping what God is going to do through us in this season and, and to those who he has assigned us to minister to. But it's going to start in our families. It's going to start in our homes. It's, it's going to start right there. We are going, that's where the ignition is going to happen. That's where it's going to be ignited. And, and just like the example I used about that light bright, we're going to see those little lights light up in different, you know, different areas and different ways. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. I just I just don't have all the words, but it's it's going to be amazing when it happens. And I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season. I'm excited about how he's moving. I'm excited how, about how he's using everyone in their respective places. And I'm expecting to hear some testimonies and 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 just some good news of of what he's doing so i have nothing further if anyone has anything else they want to add or any questions um or if you want to um think if you think of something you know later on feel free to email me um i have so many notes so many notes and i was just trying to you know pick and choose what to what to uh present because i have so many notes on this it's just it's just been a wonderful um a wonderful message for me um as well like i said it was given you know the message is always given to the messenger first before it is presented to others and there's some things that i've laid before god that that I want to see happen and there's some people that I've laid before God and I'm expecting great things. So anyone else have anything else to add or have any questions? Yes, I just wanted to say in times past and this this was one of the other oh, part of a different ministry. I remember a pastor saying, you know, you have to have um a family day and that was the extent of it because he was a pastor and so you know working in a church that's not a sabbath for him that's it's work um but i took heed to that and so monday used to be a family day it's like i'd shut the school down um for those who don't know i teach music so i would shut that down and um the show would have that, that that time off and we would spend our family time during that time and then in the evening that would be more like our date night our talk night or what have you that comes with it's a tax we all know you, you, you want to set up your altar, you want to have your family time, but we also understand that we're in a war. So the enemy's not going to just sit by and like, okay, see, they want to enhance the traditional family that God ordained. Okay, I'm going to just step back. No, he's not going to do that. 
You know, so it's like just be on guard because not fearful, but be on guard, be sober and vigilant for your enemy, the, the adversary walks around seeking whom he may devour. So we don't want to give him permission to devour us, and that's why we have to be more intentional and, and aggressive in establishing this. Um, because it's not easy. You know, if you if you brought up the household doing that, great. But for those, it's, it's for others, it may be a different dynamic, a new dynamic. And so it requires intentionality. Um, oh, yeah, when we sit down to talk or whatever, no cell phones. Uh, I don't care if it goes off. As a matter of fact, shut them off or put them in a drawer somewhere. What have you, putting, putting certain measures in place so that the focal point is the family unit and more importantly, God in the family unit. And so now, once that gets rolling, um, I'll say it becomes easier because now you're accustomed to it. Just like how you gave the analogy of your, your sons, anytime they pass by you, go into the kitchen or whatever, you lay hands on them and pray for them right quick. They got to the point where they got accustomed to it. It was unusual at first, but now it's expected. As a matter of fact, they, I, I dare say they think something is wrong if you don't do it, right? <laughs> so, so it's one of those things where it's a good habit to form. Um, and I, you know, I'll definitely be keeping everyone in prayer who's executing this because the, the family unit is under attack. We all know it is under attack. I mean, from the time LGBT started equating themselves with black people and now you don't hear about civil rights per se anymore. It's now another agenda, transgender. You don't hear about that anymore. Black Lives Matter. And, and they do away with the traditional family. That's actually one of their tenets. Not trying to get political, I'm just trying to show the progression away from what God intended. And it's, it's very cleverly disguised. And that's why I understand how the enemy is a very subtle, when it says in Genesis, he's a very clever or cunning creature. It's very subtly, subtly disguised. So you're thinking these are worthy causes until you dig deep and find out that their root has uh, malicious intent. So we have to really be intentional. We have to be uh, just just be, be in line with, with, uh, with, with God in, in this endeavor. And, I'm already seeing fruit in so many other areas. So this is just another area that we definitely want to implement and continue implementing. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much. So many good points. So many good points in that. That was awesome. Thank you, Watson, for that, for sharing all of that. There were so many good points in that, being intentional. Anyone else want to add anything or any questions? If not, I was going to not share. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Adrienne. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Yes. I, was, I wasn't I was going to share. I just, I'm new here, and I just wanted to uh, chime in because, yes, oh, my goodness, you just said so much that resonated with me. And when you talked about um, speaking your language, how we all begin to speak the same language, and how we... Um, uh come together and god can use us that way when we all worshiping together on one accord um it's like i keep hearing that y'all you guys are speaking my language and it's like okay it's amazing i'm in florida right now i'm in georgia right now but i live in florida and when you talked about the light brights <laughs> when you talked about the <laughs> light brights i guess i'm telling my age too because i identified with that um also and regarding the building the altars you are so on it because i've been studying a book and it's from pat francis and it talks about building the king of glory altars so i'm like amazed it's amazing god is truly he's truly moving because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that's how he establishes his kingdom in the earth and to be able to hear that again to hear the witness, it's like a light is really coming on. You know, it's like when the spirit of truth comes, it's like it lights up the path for you. So, you know, for me to be here from a whole different, two different resources, you know, this this is, I'm new here, you know, and it's like, I sense that the Ruach, the Holy Spirit is just kind of sending me this way. <laughs> and I'm And I'm hearing the same thing that I hear in my secret place, in my sacred place that, you know, I haven't mentioned to anybody else, like, who does that? The Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. When you talked about that, um, the sacred place, I have a chair where I sit and I'm commune with the Lord. 
And and my I have a pet. Her name is Jasmine. And when she doesn't feel well, guess what? She comes and lays by that place where I commune with the Lord. So for me, that is just so powerful that my animal, my beast, she understands. She knows where to go to receive healing. She knows where to go. to. She can sense the peace and the presence of God because that's where I go to commune with the Lord. So you are definitely speaking my language. And you guys are definitely speaking my language. And I'm going to continue to pray uh, uh, and, and wait for my husband. Like I told my, key, <laughs> my my husband about, you know, fully, fully connecting. But I am so grateful to be here. Um, and then when you talked about the altars, see, I took my notes. When you, I was just writing notes. When you talked about the altars and the pagan holidays, when you go into the stores, now you can see it. Now we can see it. Before we didn't recognize what it was, but when the spirit of truth comes, he will reveal to us, you know, and he has set us apart for such a time as this. So now we can, when we go to our sacred places, we know what we can intercede for, you know, what we can. And then when, when um, Apostle Makita calls the priests and the burnt offerings, that just blew me away as well. Because the scripture, <laughs> the scripture that the, that God had given me was Second Samuel twenty four and twenty five, and it talks about David, and it said David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings. I'm like, okay, God, so I know that I'm on track, you know, and I'm thankful that I'm right here that He has invited me. He's, I feel like He's invited me to this place with you guys. So I just, you know, I just heard so much, so much echo. I, I'm so excited, I can't hardly get it out, you know, because the joy of the Lord, when you know God is speaking to you, you know, and when you, you know, this COVID is true. I've been home with, with the Lord, <laughs> you know, I've been home sheltering in with him, blessed, I'm, I'm, I'm able to work from home, you know, I have my computer at home. So I get to go at certain times of the day and meet him at my sick, my sacred place, like you was talking about. So everything you were saying, it was just powerful. It was just such a witness to my spirit that I am walking in alignment with my father. You know, I am walking in alignment and he has recalibrated. He's recalibrating, he's aligning us to be in his perfect will and getting our burnt offerings on that altar because we are to put ourselves on that altar first you know and it's like okay because there's so many things that in our heart that we we don't know about but as we continue to worship and meet him in that place he will reveal it to us not for condemnation but for us to when it come up to get it out come up to get it out because we want to be pure priests before god we want our lips and our heart to be in alignment you know, and for me, that that's what the altar is for me. We got to first put ourselves on the altar. And when we put ourselves on the altar, that fire come, we're going to first get burnt first. Amen. We're going to first get burnt and then he can use us. Then he can flow through us. And just like you said, those bright lights, we are all representing different regions. So he's using us in different regions, but he's purifying us first. You know, so then first us and then the nations. Amen. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for that witness. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. So much wonderful insight. And I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I'm excited for everyone. I see, I I can see you guys' comments in the chat, but for some reason I can't respond. <laughs> so, but all of you have given so much insight and 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 have blessed me so much with, with your comments and and just um things that i hadn't even thought about when i was when i was doing this so you i've had i've had my own notes that i had to take too as well so thank you so much amen so if there isn't anything else if anyone else has anything to say or any questions or anything like that um and if you think of anything later please feel free to email me um, and if not, um, I'll go ahead and pray us out. Apostle, did you have anything? Is she on, is she still on here? I can't see who's up here. Okay. 
Well, if nothing else, all hearts and minds are clear. I praise God for all that he's done today. I'm, I'm grateful for everyone that, that um, participated and grateful just for all the insight that was shared. And uh, hopefully some questions were answered for you all and uh, new ideas and new insight. And, and you can go in your, your sacred space and your altar and dig deeper and dig even more into this topic. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time of reflection. We thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you for this time of communion. We thank you for this time of just confirmation in what you're doing and what you're gonna do. We are so blessed, Father, that you saw fit, God, to, to use us in this way and to open our hearts and our ears and our minds and our understanding to how you are moving in this season. We are so grateful and honored for everyone that joined us. We pray in the, for each and every one of their families individually. We just ask, Father, that the wind of your spirit be upon their families, God, that I pray right now, Father, that there be a newness awakening in these families, God, that, that, that there, there, there be a revival within their families, God, even if it's their extended family, God. Let there be a light, God, that, that illuminates your goodness and your glory and your truth, God. We just ask right now that you touch each and every one of them. Send your healing, God. Send deliverance, God. Send your anointing. God, to move on their behalf. God, change the trajectory of their families, God. Where there is chaos and confusion, God, you bring clarity, God. Where there is turmoil, God, you bring your peace, God. Let your shalom saturate them now, God. We are praying, Father, for the foundation of our nations, God, which is the family, God, that we will come to the altar, God, that we will come to the altar, God, because you're, you're there, God, to meet us, God. Your arms are open wide to meet us at the altar, God, and we're coming, God. God, would, would, would bended knees and bowed heads, God, and we're coming, God, with humbled hearts, God, to seek you the more, God, to understand you to more, the more, God, to live for you the more, God. We're just asking, Father, that you meet us in that place, God. You meet us in that sacred space, God, to commemorate, God, to, 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 to just, just pour out in forgiveness, God to saturate us, God, with healing, God, to saturate us with, with, with your anointing, God. We're just asking, Father, that you meet us there. Meet us there, God. Meet us at the altar, Father. Meet us in that place of sacredness, God. We're just honored, God, that, that, that and we're believing, even now, God, that you are going to meet us there. We're believing by your spirit, God, that you're going to move on, on that, oh, hallelujah, God. For those families right now, who have had years of anger and disruptions in their families because of a disagreement, God, we're asking you to break that right now. We're asking God that you bring reconciliation right now. We're asking that you bring peace right now. For those, God, who have spent 20 years 25 years, 15 years, five years, three years, one year, even a month, God, away from each other. They have not spoken to each other, Lord. They refuse to hear each other. They refuse to say, I'm sorry. They refuse to ask for forgiveness, God. We just ask, God, that you bring down that, 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 that heart of stone and turn it to a heart of flesh, God, and let your love, God, saturate them, God. Bring them back together, God. Let there be an understanding, God. Let there be a newness in their relationship. Let them reconcile, Father, in the way that they will know without a doubt, God, that it was your hand. It was your hand, God, that touched that relationship. It was your hand that touched that situation. Even those wayward children, God, we're asking that you bring them home, God, as we bow in the altars of our home, God, and we put their names on the altar, God, to you, God. We're asking, God, that you send them home, God. Send them home. Bring them home, God. And, and, and let there be no malice, Father. Bring them home and let them feel love, God. Let them feel welcome, God. Bring them home, God. 
those friends, God, those aunts, those uncles, God, even those parents, Father, who have turned away from you, God, as we go before you and we lay before you on the altar, God, as we intercede, Father, as we turn down our plates on behalf of our families, on behalf of our friends, and on behalf of our nation, God, we know that you are going to meet us there. And we glory in that, God. We glory in that. We glory in hearing the testimonies. We glory in seeing the change. We glory in seeing the deliverance that is to come, God. We glory in seeing the transformation, God, at the family altar, God, in our homes, God, that the Holy Spirit will fall and will gather here with us, God, and will give our children a holy language, God, and will and, and will fill our children, God, so that you can use them, God, use them as you please, God, that that their that their 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 gifts, God, and their talents, and what you have called them to do, will be made manifest and will open up, God. And even within us, God, even those that we mentor, God, those whose lives we touch every day, God, who are watching us, that we may not know who are watching us, God, let us be an example, God, of your light. Let us be that salt, God. Help us not to hide our light under a bushel, God, but place it on a candlestick for them to see that this is a safe place. It's a safe place with you, God. There's a safe place with you, God, that your arms are open to receive them. Let them see the light of your love through us, God. And we're ready for the assignment, God. We're readying ourselves for the assignment, God. We're readying ourselves to receive them, Father, to receive them in your love and to receive them with joy, God. We won't go back to the past. We won't say that you, what they should have done or, 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 or could have done. We won't say, I told you so, but we will welcome them with open arms and, 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 and with the love, the love of Yeshua, that love that, 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 that just cast away the past. We thank you, Father, and we honor you. We glorify your name, God, and just bless everyone as they go to their separate destinations. God, bless them in their homes. Bless them as they're, as they're on the road, in the, in the grocery store, whatever things that they have to do, God, throughout the week. Let it be blessed, God. Let it be blessed, Father. Everything they set their hands to do, let it be blessed, God. And we just honor and glorify you. For it is in your son Yeshua's name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. I love y'all. Love you guys. Love you. See you soon. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Blessings.